You know, a church without the Holy Spirit baptism in the people is really not a New Testament church. And I know some will, <laughs> will get upset about this, but it's a church like that is exactly like the Pharisees that we see in the Bible that Jesus especially confronted in Matthew 23. And he said that they were blocking people from the kingdom of God and would go in themselves. And that's what we have today without the whole Holy Spirit baptism, which most churches preach against or don't want. Uh, we've got the same exact thing, and that's what I've been talking about. And the Lord has told me to talk about. So in Matthew 5, we find this, and Jesus was again speaking to the Pharisees. I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, really, he really wasn't talking to the Pharisees, but he's referring to the Pharisees here. And so he said, it's got to be better than them. And of course, they were what the world would call righteous people. And they knew the scriptures. They talked about the Bible. They talked about God. They believed in God. All the things that they had, except the Holy Spirit. In fact, what he said was, righteousness, you see, that they needed can only come by the Holy Spirit. So you say you're a Christian. You say you're righteous. You say you do good things, but without the Holy Spirit baptism, which includes a speaking in tongues, you can't really be righteous in the eyes of God. Look, look at this. So Jesus said that this religion that they had was begotten by the devil. He said, your father is the devil. That's the best it could be without the Holy Spirit, see. And Jesus was the one who came and brought that. He was fully endowed with the Holy Spirit himself. So truth, I would say this, is an incarnation. It's the spirit of truth that comes with the Holy Spirit, and that spirit comes within us. And then we now are an incarnation of Christ. We have a Christ-like nature in us. It's Christ in us, not with us, by us, or about us, but in us. And that's what the Word tells us. And so one of the, the things that I've, I've seen in this is, is this very thing that I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds that. I said, you know, you, you can't be. So he goes on to say, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. What's he saying? They're out doing these terrible things, devouring widows' houses, making bad deals, being unjust, being unfair, lying, and all these kinds of things, and yet trying to cover it up with long prayers, especially out on the sidewalk. Of course, in those days, I don't think they had sidewalks, but at the corner down where people could see them in their garments and so forth. And he said, it's just a pretense, a pretense. All, all that you're doing here religiously is a pretense, which is where we end up without the Holy Spirit. Without him, we can do nothing. That's what the word says. So what's a pretense? An attempt to make something that is not the case appear true. Something that is really not the case or the situation to make it to appear that it is true. It also is a claim, especially a false or ambitious claim of some sort that we make, that I'm this or that I'm that. And so we can cover up our lives without the Holy Spirit by saying we are this or that. We can name some denomination. I'm a blank. Fill in the blank. I'm a this, I'm a that. And that is not the Christianity that Jesus came for us, okay? <laughs> in fact, we look in 1 Corinthians 13, and we see the, the, the scripture about what love really is. And the Lord said to me that there is no love without me. 
Don't call things, don't say you love something. When really you have affection for it, or you this, or you care for it, or you worship it, or whatever. There's only one love, and that's God. But anyway, he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, he said, I don't have love. He said, so where there's no love, God is not there. We're talking about this agape love. And so he says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith, he says, even, a faith that could even move mountains. And he says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it's nothing. It profits me nothing. So this, in a way, could, could include some people that have a degree of the Holy Spirit, if you see what I'm saying. And so this is something... Uh, again, about the Holy Spirit that I, that I want to share with you that is on my heart, that having been there, having been deeply involved in religious activity, in a church, in a denomination, uh, and believing that, that I was saved, believing that I was okay, believing that I was doing what God wanted, believing that, that I was whatever. But I didn't have the very essential thing that I needed, and that was the Holy Spirit baptism. And all I'm just saying, you know, I got the Holy Spirit, I got the Holy Spirit when I got saved. No, I'm talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, experiencing the fulfillment of the second feast, the Feast of Pentecost. It's been rejected, it's been renounced, it's been denied, all the things that have been done, and especially tongues that come with it. If you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues. And I, and I might say you must speak in tongues. It's very important for this. It's an important sign of that endowment. And that endowment is then an incarnation of the Christ within us. That's the hope of glory. I know that many of you that watch this have already been there and so forth. But I'm making an appeal, hoping to reach some of you out there that are caught up in this deception and lie to keep you from being supernaturally endowed to walk this walk, to be one who can cast out demons, one who does speak in tongues, because we don't know how to pray as we ought. That's what it says in Romans 8. We don't know how to pray as we ought. And I know some of you that are hearing this understand that. I don't know how to pray about this. But it says the Holy Spirit will take hold together with us and with groanings and utterings that cannot even be said or spoken, or he will pray and intercede with us and for us. So it's vital that we have this endowment if we're going to be Christians, if we're going to have a true, what we call church, actually, an ecclesia. So again, I cry out to you, if, if you don't have this, quit listening to the liars. Quit listening to those that are blocking you from the kingdom. Without the endowment of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are being blocked from the kingdom. You can't be there without it. You must be born of, of the Spirit of the water. So much more to say about that. So I hope you can hear that I'm a man that experienced both sides. I've been there to the point that I tried to walk this walk. I, I was dedicated to the Lord. I was appealing to the Lord, but nobody told me. And so I finally just gave up and, and left the church. But when I came back, the first thing that we, within a, just a few days was you need the Holy Spirit. Somebody was loved me enough to tell me the truth. And finally I said to the Lord, Lord, if this is you, I want it. And all you got to do is thirst for it, want it. You need it. You must have it. And I mean, to the fullness that you speak easily in tongues. And then you are endowed to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And then the scriptures come to, to light. It lights up and all at once it comes alive. And without the Holy Spirit breathing on the scriptures, you're going to get deceived. They're, they're, going, they're not going to be interesting. 
It's going to be dull to read the Bible and so forth. If you're there, you need this endowment. And so I say to you that so many are living in a pretense. A pretense, of course, is acting like something is that really isn't there. So I pray to the Lord for anyone here that this be real to you, that you've come before the Lord and you, you need to get out of a place that denies the power of God through the Holy Spirit. A form of God, but, but denying the power thereof. And the word says, from such, turn away. Go somewhere and get among those. If you can, find somebody that you can fellowship with, if it's one or two people in the Holy Spirit. And it will change everything. And you'll then begin to walk in the Spirit, be led of the Spirit, hear the Spirit, see in the Spirit, and your life will never be the same. Amen. Amen. Peace.